What's up everyone, Dakota Walbeck here with CourseCreatorPro.com, joined by my brother Stockton Walbeck. And in this video, we're going to be revealing the five parts of every successful ad that has led us to grossing over $11 million in sales to date for our online courses. Since launching our first course, Full-Time Filmmaker, six years ago, our ads have consistently improved as we've learned how to tap into the emotions, pain points, and innermost desires of our customers. Okay, so to put this in perspective, we've spent over $1.1 million on Facebook ads and another $300,000 on YouTube ads. We've run thousands of A-B tests, scripted, edited, and filmed dozens of high-end video ads, and so we feel like we've cracked the code of what every successful video ad consists of. We've tested these methods we're about to teach you countless times on the front lines, finding what truly makes an ad a cell generating monster. And being professional filmmakers, we ourselves hold our video ads to a golden standard that most advertisers never even attempt. All right, so what exactly makes an ad so successful? These five parts of the ad are what we call the ad anatomy. These five distinct parts of an ad are found in some shape or form in every successful ad you've ever seen. Whether it's from big name car brands like Hyundai, funny Old Spice commercials, or a quick two minute ad for an online course. After this video, you will begin to not only recognize these patterns in the ads you see, but why they are used, and exactly what they do to your brain to get you in the purchasing mood. All right, with that being said, here are the five parts of every successful ad. Here we go. First, we have the hook, the first three to five seconds of the ad. Second comes the pain or the problem. What keeps your customers up at night? Third is the solution. How does your product fix that pain and solve the problem? Fourth is the objections. Everyone has doubts. Everyone's skeptical, so how will you handle those objections? Fifth is the call to action. This is your final petition for the viewer to take action. What should they do to take the next step? Before we dive in, if you are even remotely experienced with marketing or advertising, you've heard of most, if not all of these fundamentals before. But the real question is, are you using them correctly? We currently help over 2000 course creators and marketers with incredible products and ideas to scale their business. And yet no matter the marketer, we found that more often than not, these five parts of a successful ad are either applied incorrectly or neglected altogether. You might be surprised at what common mistakes you're making that are killing your conversions. So to fix those mistakes or prevent them from ever happening in the first place, let's start by teaching you the hook. All right, people, this is arguably the most important part of the entire ad. It's very simple. If they don't make it past the first three to five seconds of the ad, what's the point in dumping your whole heart and soul into making everything after it? Let me give you a quick example. Just last month, I ran an extensive A-B test where I put four hooks against each other. The first five seconds were the only part of the ad that changed. And what did I find? Well, in the first nine days of running that test, hook A brought in one sale, hook B brought in two, hook C brought in zero, and hook D, surprisingly enough, brought in a whopping five sales. That's 62% of the sales coming from just one of those hooks. The scariest part of this test that exposed the importance of the hook was that hook C was the initial hook that I scripted and planned on using just that one. I almost didn't try the other three at all. This test by itself should go to show just how crucial those first three to five seconds of your ad really are. We do have a full 13 minute video in the paid course showing you all of the results from this exact test and the best practices for constructing an effective hook. On Facebook, your ad starts on mute, so it has to be visually appealing enough to stop a scroll. On YouTube, your ad has five so unmuted seconds to demand someone's start. attention or else your ad I is toast. To illustrate my point, you tell me if any of these ads intrigue you enough to keep you watching. What's a super easy way to tell that your bed is awful? The raw egg test. Let me prove it. Did you know that the wrong mattress protector can ruin the feel of your mattress? So what do all of these hooks have in common? Each took a different approach, but they were all intriguing and engaging. Not all hooks are created equal. We've seen so many times that advertisers make the common mistake of thinking that my hook has to be funny. This could not be further from the truth. We've actually found much more success with non-funny hooks as comedy can kind of be difficult to do correctly. It completely depends on your audience, your strategy, your brand, and the product. However, these are the five hook types that nearly every successful ad uses. Number one, painful or validating. Number two, value foreshadow. Number three, funny. Number four, pattern interrupt. And number five, controversial. Okay, big point here. No matter which of these hook approaches you use, the purpose of the hook must remain the same. Everyone thinks that the main purpose of the hook is to grab attention, but that's only half true. 
I've seen thousands of ads that take this principle and create incredibly annoying ads. Because they focused so much on grabbing people's attention, it ended up being more clickbaity and totally disconnected from the rest of the ad. Screaming as loud as you can for five seconds with your shirt off very well might grab my attention. But if the rest of the ad doesn't explain why you were screaming half naked, people will end up feeling like you've wasted their time instead of maximizing it. The far more important purpose of the hook is to create pain. So listen, people want to fix pain more than they want to get gain. Think about this. Would you rather take a pill that would make you a million dollars or take a pill that would keep you from losing that million dollars? Which one demands your action quicker? Now, it might be harder to say if you don't actually have a million dollars. I get it. But the fear of loss has been shown to be significantly more potent than the desire for gain in the human brain. The frustration and anxiety over that loss of money would be much greater than the thrill and the joy that you had when you initially gained it. So that's the job of the hook, to be relatable, painful, and intriguing. If it's just intriguing or just relatable, you'll be forced to rely heavily on the rest of the ad to compensate for the clickbaity hook. Now, out of all of the possible hook options available, we've by far found the most success with the painful slash validating approach and the value for shadow approach. To demonstrate these two types, let us show you an example of each of these hooks and how they can be used. First is our personal favorite and most successful hook, and it is the painful or validating hook. Here is the hook we use for one of our most top performing ads to date that has generated nearly a million dollars in sales alone. Here's what professional filmmakers said were their biggest mistakes they made when they first started. Number one, I constantly used the wrong lenses in the wrong scenarios and had no idea what different focal lengths were doing to my image. We start by saying, here's what professional filmmakers say were their biggest mistakes they made when they first started. A mistake is painful. No one enjoys making mistakes, and certainly everyone who is human will seek to overcome or avoid mistakes. A painful hook will cause a customer to think, oh no, I really hope these 10 mistakes he's about to list aren't the ones that I'm making. It creates intrigue and motivates them to keep watching. One of our very first ads that scaled us up to six figures a month also had this hook approach. So you just bought a new camera, now you're spending all day watching YouTube tutorials trying to figure out how to use it. Again, we point out it's painful and annoying to to look all over YouTube to find decent camera tutorials. It grabs the viewer's attention and creates intrigue. They begin to think, I sure hope he shows me a more efficient way to learn. Next, we have the value for shadow hook. Okay, the goal of the value for shadow is two parts. One, a hook that effectively states that value is indeed coming. And then two, actual value that wows people in the ad itself. This ad type is incomplete without this crucial second part. Don't just throw in a bunch of generic ad banter like everyone else. The goal is to truly impress people with the amount of value that you're giving them in just a simple ad. So you might ask, well, how do you give value in an ad? Isn't the whole point of the ad to sell people something? Well, great question. Let's take a look at a value for shadow hook that we used for an ad that has also grossed in over a million dollars in sales. Check it out. Here are the top questions that I get about how to create cinematic videos. What camera should I by? What lenses should I use and when? All right, this hook did two things really well. First, it created intrigue by showing that if any of these questions are ones that they've had before, we're hinting the facts that will teach them the answers. Naturally, that gets people intrigued because think about it, they find value in getting answers to questions. Although pain is by far the strongest motivator to action, the desire for gain is still incredibly strong, don't get me wrong. And that is indeed the ultimate goal with this hook. You want to show them all of the glorious possibilities there are to learning, improving skills, and fixing mistakes. The second thing this ad did well is it creates a cliffhanger because we set them up to expect some value in the hook. We kept that promise and ran them through 11 of the most asked questions about filmmaking, but to create a cliffhanger, we told them the webinar is where we'll answer all of them. So we used the cliffhanger in the hook and also in the call to action. So Vshred is a great example of a company that uses this cliffhanger approach really well. Listen closely to what he says here. So according to studies, there's one food that can raise your overall testosterone levels by 52%. So he says there is one food that can raise your testosterone levels by 52%. Immediately, this creates intrigue and it causes people to sense that value is coming. So what is the value you might ask? Well, the value is this shirtless dude telling me that with this one food, I can raise my testosterone by 52%. This is especially effective if I'm someone who's noticed that I have low testosterone levels. I'm even more intrigued. But to leave people really hanging on, he puts a cliffhanger towards the end of his ad. And there's four common foods that you're probably eating right now that are doing that exact thing, causing you to feel low energy and fatigue, low libido, increased fat gain. You can't put on any muscle and so- Okay, did you catch it? This is huge. 
he makes mention that on top of that one food that will increase your testosterone, there's actually four more foods that destroy your testosterone, both of which will not be shared unless you click on the ad. I made a free video presentation to show you what these four foods are. You have to click on it to figure it out. Now that is a good ad. So a good value for Shadow Hook must be something relatable and intriguing. It needs to be something that people in that niche can truly get value from and apply into their lives. Now the funny pattern interrupts and controversial hook styles we talk about in the paid course, but those two we just talked about are by far the most successful hook approaches that we have found. Once someone has made it past the hook and has decided to continue to watch your ad, this is your chance to really create some pain and viewer retention. Again, people want to fix pain more than they want to get gain. There is a good quote from a book called The One Sentence Persuasion Course, and it says, people will do anything for those who encourage their dreams, justify their failures, allay their fears, confirm their suspicions, and help them throw rocks at their enemies. This is the part of the ad that persuades people to take action. Just like this quote states, people will do anything if you can help them meet those needs. And where do needs stem from? Pain. People's pain points vary wide and large. They consist of things like inconvenience, lack of money, lack of happiness, a fear of something, a current solution not working, and so on. Whatever the pain, your job in this part of the ad is to relate to their innermost problems and frustrations. Going back to one of our top performing ads, we listed off 10 of the biggest mistakes that filmmakers make. Whether you recognize it or not, each mistake we've scripted was intentionally structured to confirm suspicions. Before seeing our ad, nearly all filmmakers have a suspicion that they are making mistakes. That's just a given. We made sure that each and every mistake in this ad was immensely relatable and painfully true. Since our target demographic is primarily beginners, we knew that all of these 10 mistakes were inevitably ones that they were currently experiencing. After each mistake in the ad, their pain grows stronger and stronger. They realize more and more that they do indeed have a problem and need our help to solve it. Previously, they may have thought their videos were just fine, but now after watching an ad that just exposed all these mistakes, they aren't so sure and they're kind of second guessing themselves. And that is precisely what every single good ad does. It exposes a clear and distinct problem and those problems bring pain. The more specific the problem, the more unique your solution can be. A common mistake that we see with advertisers is presenting a problem that is too broad. For example, one of our students made an ad whose main problem was this. So they presented the problem as not knowing how to live your dreams. So what's wrong with this ad? The problem is so broad and generic, it essentially appeals to everybody. Everyone is trying to live their dreams. So if that's the number one problem you're solving, you're appealing to everybody. And if you're appealing to everybody, you're appealing to no one. Now there's no point in presenting a problem if there isn't a solution. And on top of that, here's a newsflash for you. People aren't dumb. They know you're running an ad for something. We're not hiding that and neither should you. If you did your job by making the problem painful enough, the viewer has no other choice than to give your solution a shot. This is the part of the ad where it's time to make the solution shine. The solution is very simply the vehicle. When someone's experiencing pain, they immediately start having desires to get rid of it. That's very natural. To get to their desire, they need a vehicle to take them there, much like a car would do. This part of the ad needs to feel natural. A big beginner mistake that I see is when people are pitching their product throughout the whole ad. They focus so much on drilling in the solution that at the end of the ad, people feel like their ears were talked off just about how awesome you and your products were. So time-wise, if you present your solution too soon in the ad, it will quickly join the failed ads folder. In our top mistakes ad, the solution doesn't even come until one minute and 22 seconds in. We literally spent 90 percent of the ad drilling in the pain instead of the solution. We could have showed them all the clients we worked with, we could have pitched the course, but we didn't mention the paid online course once. If you spend your whole ad talking about yourself, your products, and how amazing it is, you are zero percent different than anyone else in the market. Be different and be unique. Now that you've delivered the solution on a golden platter, unfortunately not everyone is going to be begging you to buy. This is the nature of the game. You can't and won't impress everybody. And every person who watches your ad is going to have at least one objection. Objections are doubts, limiting beliefs, questions, fears, skepticisms, all of which destroy sales. Your job in this ad is to handle those objections. Now, just, just wait a second. Let's expose another very common mistake. Advertisers will often throw in as many objection handlers as they possibly can. Because what's wrong with handling objections in the ad, right? Wrong. Making your ad a full minute longer with the added objection handling might feel like you're covering all of the bases. But these objection handlers can quickly fall on deaf ears and lead to a loss of retention. 
This especially applies to course creators and other services that are sold with a webinar. The hundreds of smaller objections should be handled in the webinar. That's what the webinar is for. While the one or two really big ones can be handled in the ad. When you fill up your ad with too many objections, you're just wasting your breath. Focus on the pain and the solution, not the objections. Save that for the webinar or whatever else is on your landing page. It is important to know that whatever the case, objections need to come almost last in the order of operations. Whether you handle them in the webinar or the ad, they come last because What's the point of handling objections if there aren't any to handle in the first place? First, they have to become problem aware. Second, solution aware. And then finally, and only then, does the customer now have a question or doubt worth addressing. Objections can still be handled in the ad, but maybe just not in the way you'd think. For example, let's look at one of our ads and let's show you. My six steps to making money in a variety of industries like weddings, luxury real estate, commercials, travel films, YouTube content, you name it. The tips and tricks I'll be sharing in this free webinar will be of value no matter what type of content you shoot. Early on, we'd have lots of people emailing us asking, but does this webinar help me if I'm a wedding filmmaker or real estate filmmaker, et cetera, et cetera. So we handle those objections up front by simply listing the fact that it applies to any type of filmmaker. Oftentimes, objections can be handled by presenting the solution simultaneously, as you just saw. The last part of handling objections is establishing credibility and authority. I say this is optional because we've made millions of dollars in sales with ads where we don't even mention our name once. Instead, we try to establish credibility with our results and our value. If you can create authority and credibility naturally without having to talk about yourself verbally, all the more power to you. In our top mistakes ad, we never talk about who we are and why they should trust us, but they still saw how cinematic our videos are. They saw how we were filming all around the world. They saw how we were working with big name brands, all of which happened without us verbalizing any of it. It happened visually. Testimonials are another supplementary tool that creates authority without you having to be the one that says it. Sometimes you really do just need to flat out tell people why they should trust you, which is why this is oftentimes an essential part of the ad. We've established credibility in our ads by saying things like this. And today I get to travel the world creating professional video content for big name brands like Hyundai, LG, Canon, and many more. So Parker mentions that he traveled the world and he's filmed videos for big name brands that everyone recognizes and trusts. But if you can, get creative and try to do it another way. All right, and to finish things off, we have the call to action. This is incredibly simple and straightforward. Your CTA is the very last part of the ad. This needs to accomplish two things. One, create a cliffhanger, and two, be as clear, simple, and direct as possible. And I'm talking lucidly clear. As mentioned earlier in the V-Shred ad, the best call to actions are cliffhangers. Whether you recognize it or not, every Netflix series and TV show you watch uses this strategy. If they didn't, there'd be no such thing as Netflix binging. Netflix and other TV binging is a real thing because at the end of the video, again, the end, they give you such a strong cliffhanger that you tell yourself, okay, one more video, just one last one. I can't stop here. Because these TV series do such a good job of hinting at what's about to come, the very thought of what you're gonna miss out on if you don't watch the next one intrigues the living daylights out of you. And thus, the Netflix binge was born. The second part of every good CTA is to be direct, clear, and easy. Easy. Look, friction is your worst enemy. The more friction, the harder it is on the customer. The harder it is on the customer, the worse your conversions are going to be. This mistake is mostly manifest in the cardinal sin of including more than one call to action. For example, here is a call to action that I hear a lot at the end of most YouTube videos. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. If you want to see more videos like this, like, subscribe, make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified, and don't forget to check out our merchandise in the description below. And lastly, be sure to give us a follow on Facebook. Here's our Instagram handle, and be sure to check out my next video by clicking here. What, what on earth am I supposed to do here? It boggles my mind that YouTubers think that we do all of those things. There were like seven things they asked me to do in the span of 10 seconds. They crowded your brain with so many requests that I wonder if people do any of those. People have a hard enough time making their beds in the morning, let alone embarking on a seven step journey into the wilderness of accomplishing every task you just asked them to do. Now in a YouTube video, you might get away with that, but in an ad, this is exponentially more detrimental. You're putting hard earned money behind your ads. A poor CTA kills conversions and loses you money. Your call to action also needs to be consistent. If your call to action is click on the link below to watch our free one hour webinar, after they click, there better be a one hour webinar and it better be clear as day with a big blaring button 
where the webinar is and what they are going to get. There's nothing worse than clicking on an ad that says, click below to get my free PDF. And then after you click, you have to scroll past dozens of t-shirt promotions, watch a mandatory 60 second video, click out of three pop-up promotions that came up and still not be able to find the PDF. Again, friction is your enemy. Make this process as smooth and simple as humanly possible and don't try and play tricks. Well, with that being said, those are the five parts of every successful ad of what we call the ad anatomy. To learn more about how we've scaled our own courses to over $11 million in sales and helped hundreds of other course creators around the world find financial freedom through automated sales funnels for their courses, click the link below to watch our free one hour webinar where we reveal our top 10 secrets to creating online courses. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you there.